Hello there and welcome to this week's casual video. Of course, Tesla has been in the news a lot recently. The share price is down 69% year to date. And this is a number that normally Elon Musk would find funny, entertaining, giggle a bit. But I think in this case, he will make an exception. Now, this video, we're going to start by going through what I believe are five relevant reasons why the Tesla share price has collapsed. But then we're going to take a look at why I'm actually buying. If you've seen the video on the public portfolio, you know that as of November, Tesla is part of the portfolio and I've actually increased the position during the month of December. So let's get started with the first reason that is the acquisition of Twitter. This is something that wasn't welcomed by the Tesla shareholders as there was a fear that Elon Musk would spend a lot more time with Twitter than with Tesla. I think that is definitely a fair point. Indeed, Elon Musk has spent majority of his time trying to solve certain problems that are within Twitter, not only from a technical point of view, but also financially, as the company isn't profitable as part of the acquisition was funded by debt. Now, of course, Elon Musk owns other companies as well. The boring company, SpaceX, Neuralink, but the time that he spends there is fairly limited. In my opinion, all of the four companies that you see on the screen take a limited time from Elon Musk as his role is pretty much finding the right people for the right positions and then translating his vision into actions that, of course, not only the, these individuals, but also the teams assembled will follow up on. I think all four companies have great teams in place and therefore my personal opinion is that even if Elon Musk dedicates significant portion of his time to Twitter over the next one to one and a half year, all of these four companies will perform to execute well. So personally, I'm not that much concerned about this, but I do understand that it can be seen as, of course, not, not the best decision purely from a Tesla shareholder point of view. The second reason is insider selling. Elon Musk being the one who sold the most, of course, significant portion to fund the acquisition of Twitter in the first place and then selling even more during the month of December. So recently, as Twitter is not profitable, he needed to ensure that there's enough funds to keep the company up and running until they figure out how to break even and then become profitable. But as you can see, he's not the only one from the top management who sold. There are a lot of others. And what I found interesting is the price at which they sold was almost always above 250 or at least on average was about $250 a share. So it could also be that these executives think that when Tesla reaches that level, it's just overvalued. So that could also be a reason. And I don't blame them. I don't blame if they're selling at price point that they believe the company is overvalued. That's also their right. Of course, from a price point, from a Tesla share price point, Whenever there is a huge demand or supply of the share, it moves in one direction or the other. In this case, there have been over 24 billion worth of shares dumped into the market. Economics 101, the price declines. So is it a relevant reason? Absolutely. Is it one that has a, an impact on the business, on the fundamentals of Tesla? I don't think so. So even though it is a reason that explains the past or part of the movement of the share price over the last 12 months, I don't think it is a reason or a concern for the coming period. Reason number three, the Fed's increase in interest rates. This is something that Elon Musk pointed many times. He's, he keeps pointing the finger at the Fed. This is the reason why share price is down 69%. This is a reason that is a valid one. It has an impact on the share price but it doesn't justify a decline of 69%. Here's a tweet of his not that long time ago. Security analysis 101. As the risk-free real rate of return from treasury bills approaches the much riskier rate of return from stocks, the value of stocks drop. For example, if treasury bills and stocks both had a 10% rate of return, everyone would just buy the former. Of course, if treasury bills and stocks both had a 10% rate of return, everybody would be buying the treasury bills as they're backed by the government and there's no risk. It's why they're, it's being referred to as the risk-free rate. On the other side, stocks, well, there's a lot of uncertainty and volatility there. 
he is absolutely right that when there's an increase in the risk free rate, uh, as we all know, it's part of the discount rate. So when the discount rate goes up, the valuation of the companies go down. And I want to point out two pieces of information here. The first one is he's referring to real rate of return. And I listened to his conversation in Twitter spaces earlier this week, where he referred that the real rate is somewhere close to 6%. Now, if we know that the nominal rate of return when it comes to the treasury bills is close to 4%, basically he's expecting, and he referred that we are in deflation, he expects that the inflation rate is actually negative 2%. So is he right or wrong? Of course, there is no way to prove that, but he basically criticize the fact that they're looking at outdated data. And he could be right, he could be wrong. It is something that I think is interesting to see. But on the other side, the second piece of information is if we take a look at the treasury, no, the treasury, the return basically offered by the T-bills over the last 10, 15 years, I think it's a bit unfair to only focus on this increase over the last, say, less than two years. Because... Tesla share price also benefited from this decline as well over time. And I'll point out to this Twitter conversation that was started by Secret CFO, who mentioned blaming the rate hikes for a stock price fall is the same as saying your stock was overvalued before based on artificially cheap money. And I think this is definitely important to consider. Now, the question was, you don't think there's any validity in saying that a change in long-term interest rate expectations affects the discount rate and reduces share price yes it's very much the case but outline case is rates over the last 15 years not the rates now so yes it's the driver but it is just normalizing back from an artificially inflated level and i think this is something that we need to keep in mind now the fourth reason that i believe is also a relevant one from a and maybe the only one from a business point of view is the impact on the of the interest rates on Tesla's business. Now, if you are to buy a car and you pay in cash, you don't care what the interest rates are because you're not borrowing money. If you buy a house and you don't pay and you pay in cash, it's the same case. But both houses and cars, majority of the buyers are buying using a loan. What that means is the price that they pay is the cost of the car, but also the cost of debt when it comes in the form of interest. Now, what that means is, of course, that even if Tesla keeps the prices of their cars exactly the same, the final consumer, the buyer, pays more only because the interest rates went up. So there are two options that Tesla has. The first one is to lower prices. What that means is, from their point of view, of course, they get, they may, maybe they're selling more cars, but the profitability per car will go down. But the final buyer would be paying pretty much the same or maybe even less per car. The second option is if they keep the prices as they are, basically they'll be selling less as the total cost of the car goes up, but the profitability will remain the same on again a unit basis. Referring back to the same conversation in Twitter spaces, Elon Musk hinted that they're more likely moving to the first option or lowering the prices as the goal is to capture larger part of the market to increase market share and i think long term that is the right decision as if that is what they do basically whenever the same buyers make a decision for their next car they have already been exposed to owning a tesla and the second the third and fourth car it's more likely that it will be tesla than any other brand so in the short run it will have impact on the profitability in the long run. I think it will have a better return when it comes to market share and also profitability. Reason number five, and this is this is something that I think is has by far the biggest impact. It was significantly overvalued to begin with. Now there was a Twitter poll. I don't follow Tesla carefully, but I love their cars and I own zero shares. So there is no position. To all the bears out there, what's the number one reason it's down 70% year to date? As you can see, 80.5% of the answers were it was overvalued. And I have valued Tesla a few times over the last couple of years. And every time I got to the same conclusion that it was overvalued, 
I couldn't justify the price based on the fundamentals. Therefore, I, I never opened a position. So if you followed this channel, you know that my investment philosophy is not, or, and also approach is not based on what's happening out there in terms of speculation and, and these kind of short-term events. I'm really focused on understanding the business and making assumptions that I believe are realistic for the future. So if I take a look at my assumptions at the moment, of course, it's a completely different case. So let's take a look at what's the impact of each of these five reasons, and then I'll share why I'm actually buying. So the first one, Elon Musk buying Twitter. Of course, he has less time available. I don't think the Tesla is going to perform worse because Elon Musk will be busy with Twitter. I think the, the basically the people who has are in, in the most important positions there and the team assembled are doing a great job. So if there's a critical decision, I'm sure Elon Musk will be available, but I cannot imagine that now suddenly Tesla starts executing poorly. Insider selling, the reason number two, definitely important one for the decline, forward looking and basically looking into the fundamentals of the business, no impact at all. Number three, increasing interest rates. In my opinion, this is something that had an impact, so maybe 20 to 30% of the decline could be attributed to this, but it is already embedded in the share price. So looking forward, if anything, if Elon is right on deflation, interest rates are likely to go down. If the Fed is, is working with outdated data and now they see that there is, we are in deflation, that is something that we should expect. And if that is to happen, then Tesla share price will go up. Number four, impact of interest rates on Tesla's business. As mentioned, I think this is a tough decision to make and is likely to have a negative impact on Tesla's short run, but definitely the best decision to make with, with the long run um, view in, in mind. And lastly, number five, it was significantly overvalued to begin with. The reason why I hadn't invested in the last couple of years. Now it's a completely different story. I believe that the market has fairly short-term memory. Basically what we have been discussing in this video is this part. So the share price is down 69%, right? This is, this is what this video has been all about. What this video hasn't been about yet is what has been forgotten by the market. And if you take a look at the last five years, even with the 69% decline, the share price is up close to 500%. So I don't think it's fair to only focus on the 69% and basically point fingers to the Fed or point fingers to Elon Musk acquiring Twitter. I think that we need to take a look at the long, bit of a wider range, a longer time horizon. So there's no doubt that the Tesla team did a great job so far. And if anything, they're positioned from a cash point of view, from a net debt point of view, the best from any other uh, basically car manufacturer at this moment in time. So based on my analysis, based on my evaluation, the fair value is somewhere close to 600 billion or close to $190 a share. That's why recently I started basically increasing the position and this video is not supposed to be, is, is not um, an investment or, or uh, an, inv an advice in that aspect. This is just something that I think is, is, could be useful for some to basically to, to have a, to, to see the way that I'm looking at these kind of events. Because so far the, the attention has been too much on the negatives. And I think not only that the market has a short-term memory, it also is very emotional. So when we had this huge bull run, this huge increase, sure, there were some who were making a case that Tesla is getting overvalued. But those were not the investors who are now blaming Elon Musk for this decline. I don't think, it's, I don't think that's fair. I think the, the sentiment has significantly shifted from everything going right for Tesla and being optimistic to kind of a more of a reality check and moving from a wishful thinking to a bit more realistic thinking about the future. And 
now to even a bit of a panic mode in my opinion. So this has been all regarding this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. If you haven't subscribed to the channel and you enjoy these kind of videos, please consider to do so. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.